message is about your faith. So many times we're so dependent upon everyone else's faith. Yeah. We want to go see a faith healer. We want to go hear a faith preacher. We want to just see God do miracles. We want to see things happen. And so many times we're dependent on everybody else's faith but our own. Amen. The Bible says it's impossible to please God without faith. Amen. That you must first believe that He is. Yes. And that He is a rewarder of those who will diligently seek Him. That word means seeking Him with all your heart, soul, mind, body, everything that's in you. Trusting Him with your entire life. We come to church sometimes, we just sit here and we really don't understand, amen, the Word of God or what's being preached. Or we just hear bits and pieces and we really don't strengthen our faith. It's our weekly living with God, amen, and our families that strengthen the faith that we have. Amen. The Bible says, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. If you don't hear the Word of God, then of course your faith doesn't become active in your life. Amen. And dormant faith is what the Bible says, dead. There is something called dead faith. Faith without works is dead. 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 People that have faith, amen, work. Can somebody say amen? amen. We're living in a generation at a time when a lot of preachers, amen, are preaching. You don't need to do anything. You know, we know we're not saved by works. We're saved by grace. At least any man can boast. But you do need to do something. Yes. When you stand before God, hopefully you'll have some things that are rewarding Amen. Some things that God says to you that will bless you. Amen. Hopefully He will say, Enter in thou good and faithful servant. Amen. 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 That's what I want to hear. More than anything else, I want to hear that I've been good and I've been faithful. We need to realize that it's not our goodness, it's not our righteousness, that all stinks in the nostrils of God. Amen. But God also says, Enter in Thou good and faithful servant. Right. There's something about being good. And there's a whole lot about being faithful. If you look around this morning, you realize a lot of people just ain't faithful. Amen. See, the Bible says God is faithful. Amen. Amen. So the problem's not on God, the problem's on us. Amen. How faithful are we? How do we let everything clog our minds and interrupt our faith in our life? Amen. It's because we get so caught up in this world that we forget about God. Uh -huh. See, that's why the Lord said, come out from among them, be separate. And I'll be your father, and you'll be my children. Amen. But so many times we want to hold on to the old instead of embracing the new. Amen. And the new is exactly this. When you're born again, all things pass away, and behold, all things become new. Yes, amen. I took a short little trip, and I was talking to my sisters, and we were all talking about the old days, you know. The times when people actually came to church and they had an experience with God. Anybody remember those days? Amen. I remember people coming up that drug addiction, alcoholic, uh, amen, demon possessed, everything else. When they got up from the altar, after wiping all the tears from their eyes, they were changed. Amen. I mean, changed in an instant. Amen. They had faith in God, they were changed. God, amen, cleaned them up and gave them a new lease on life. They were a new creature in Christ. Today we seemingly have folks come up, go to the altar, don't shed any tears, uh, go back to the congregation, I'm saved, uh, amen, but nothing has changed in their life. I believe we need to get back to the old-fashioned gospel that I've preached now all my ministry. Amen. People actually can get saved, and I believe they're still being saved, Amen. and hopefully they'll continue to be saved. But you can be lost. Yes. Amen. You can once be saved and be lost. Yes. In spite of what a lot of preachers have told you and taught you, amen, you can lose your salvation. Yes. Amen. It takes faith to hold on to God. Yep. Without faith, you cannot please God. 
And God wants you to know today that it's not my faith, it's your faith. It's not someone else's faith, it's your faith. You have to know the Word of God. People ask all the time, why are my prayers being answered? I don't know. Why don't you answer that question for yourself? Do you really have faith in God? Are you really trusting God? I mean, we see it all the time. We see it, you know, in different people's lives. Amen. We see it in the offering. We see it in attendance. We see it all across every form. We see people that are losing out with their faith. Amen. God wants you to have your faith. Yes. You need faith in God. You need to come to church prayed up, paid up, ready to go. Amen. You need to realize that God expects something more from you than just saying, I'm a Christian. Amen. The word Christian, amen, means Christ-like. Are you really like Christ? Are you just like you used to be out in the world? Has anything really changed in your life? If not, you need to get back to an old-fashioned altar Amen. and cry out to God until you can get that thing settled. Amen. Amen. Now we sang the song, the old account was settled. Amen. Amen. Well, the old account was settled, but what about the new account? Amen. Huh? Amen. Don't become no account. Amen. Amen. What my family used to tell me. Amen. You have got to keep your life continually on that road that God has prepared for you, that path that God has placed your feet upon. See, the, the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. He orders your steps. But you can't sidetrack. We got the story of the prodigal, amen. The father never went to the prodigal. The prodigal left. The prodigal got what he could. And that's the way a lot of people are today. They come to church, get what they can, and leave. Things get okay, and they get a little, you know, peace in their minds and in their hearts, and they're gone. And a lot of them leave, amen, they can't leave it alone. they got to try to bring everybody else with them. So if you've got somebody talking in your ear about this church, you need to shut them down. You need to not be part of it. I don't care where you're at. Shut it down. Walmart, Kmart, amen, anywhere you find it. Shut it down. Why? Because you, amen, have faith in God and you want to continue in God so you can't put over that nonsense. Amen. See, garbage in, garbage out, amen. What I want in my heart is the Word of the living God because that's what causes me to have faith. Yeah. That's what causes us to believe God enough to become faithful to God. Amen. We get a little relief and that's enough. Yeah. We get a little peace and that's enough. You know, three people have died recently from this church. Mm -hmm. Tragically. Mm -hmm. Tragically. Mm -hmm. They didn't die of old age. They didn't die because someone shot them or someone killed them. They died because, amen, it was just a tragic death. Some were out of God's presence. Some, amen, were crying out to God in their situation. But nevertheless, it's always on you, not anyone else. Your faith is what gets you to God. Your faith is what saves you in this hour that we're living in. Amen. It's not everybody else's faith. It's your faith. Can somebody say amen? Amen. I don't want to hear about no more tragic deaths. Amen. amen. We all know we're going to die, but hopefully we can all die peaceful deaths in old age. Amen. Amen. Not some tragic death that needlessly occurred. We need, amen, to know that Jesus is on our side. Hallelujah. To know that He's inside our hearts. Yeah. Know that the Father is there with Him. Amen. Know that the peace of God abides with us. And that's what we need. We don't need just a quick fix. That's the world's situation. You know, give me a quick fix. Give me some drugs. Give me this. Give me that. Something else. Just to let me get through the day. I get through the day, each day, by Jesus Christ. Because <coughs> He is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one can
comes to the Father except by Him. That's right. Amen. And no one comes to Him except by faith. None of you seen Jesus this morning. Amen. He didn't come to your house, knock on your door and tell you to get Him and go to Miracle Temple for charity. It's by faith you did that. Amen. When you read the book of Hebrews, you see by faith they did things. Amen. By faith they gave their lives and become martyrs because they believed in a mighty God. Amen. It's by faith. You know, sometimes we think we're suffering so much. You know, we got so much coming against us. My Lord, all of us need to read Fox's book of martyrs. If you never read it, pick it up somewhere. I may have it still in my library, but you need to read it. What men and women before you went through by faith. Amen. Where they would not deny Christ, they continue on. Today it doesn't take much for people to get out. Doesn't take much for them to deny Christ. Doesn't take a whole lot for the devil to pull them down. But these men and women, amen, stood up and stood up for God. Amen. I know Brother Steve preached the message, stand up, amen. We need to stand up. But not only stand up, stand out. And our life has to be changed. Amen? Amen? We have to be renewed daily. This is something that just one quick fix doesn't fix. It's something where you have to constantly hear the Word of God, read the Word of God. I've been doing it for years and years and years and still see things that I've never seemingly saw before even though I've read it before. Amen. Because new revelation comes. Yes. God doesn't want you living on and off Old revelation. He wants you to have continual revelation. He wants you to grow in grace. He wants you to grow in knowledge. He wants you to grow in wisdom. He wants to be able to use you. Amen. Amen. We call ourselves a Pentecostal church. There will be nine gifts working in this church. Amen. But there ought to be nine fruits working in your life. Amen. And how many knows faith is a gift and faith is also a fruit. Amen. The only one. The only one. And it's your faith. Amen. We're going to look at the Word of God this morning. Matthew chapter 15, verses 21 to 28. These stories you've heard before. But you need to hear them again. And I want you to just concentrate on one thing. Where it says, your faith. Okay? Right. Jesus then left that part of the country and walked the 50 miles to Tyre and Sidon. Amen. Walk the 50 miles. Walk the 50 miles. We can't walk a half block. Walk 50 miles. Amen. Amen. And a woman from Canaan who was living there came to him pleading, Have mercy on me, O Lord. King David's son, for my daughter has a demon within her, and it torments her constantly. But Jesus gave her no reply, not even a word. Then his disciples urged him to send her away. Tell her to get going, they said, for she is bothering us with all her begging. Then he said to the woman, I was sent to help the Jews, the lost sheep of Israel, not the Gentiles. But she came and worshipped him. And I want you to notice what happened. She worshipped him. What are the disciples doing? They're trying to get her sent away. What's the crowd doing? Well, she's interrupting the message. She's, uh, you know, crying out and, and she's disturbing people and she's bothering us, they said. Hey, man, you ever been bothered? Mm -hmm. Huh? Well, they were bothered by her. But she was in a situation where she needed some relief. She had a daughter. It wasn't herself, but she had a daughter. Amen. That had been tormented for a long time by the devil. But she came and worshipped him. When you begin to worship God, that's when God begins to see your faith. Amen. When you begin to worship God and plead, God begins to see your faith and hear your prayer. Amen. She worshipped. Again, sir, help me. Doesn't seem right to take bread from the children and throw it to the dogs, he said. Yes, it is, she replied. For even the dogs, the puppies beneath the table, are permitted to eat the crumbs that fall. Woman, 
Jesus told her, your faith is large and your request is granted. And her daughter was healed right then. Hallelujah. Right then. Hallelujah. Why? Because she had large faith. The people of God, amen, sometimes have the smallest amount of faith because they get to a place where they're just, you know, surviving. They, they just want to come to church every once in a while, really don't want to hear the word, can't wait, amen, for 12 o'clock to come so they can rush the door, amen, hope nobody gets hurt uh, when the crowd begins to move out. They're trying to get to the restroom before the Baptist church gets out, amen, and, you know, they just want to run like a stampede to get away. My Lord, I remember a time when you couldn't get them out of church. I actually remember a time in this church I had to turn off the lights, amen. I used to be a bartender and I'd say, you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. So as a pastor, I adopted that too. I'd tell them, turn off the lights, you ain't got to go home, but you can't stay here. I got to go to the house, amen. But people love the house of God. They love the word of God. They love being in the house of God. They really didn't even want to go home. Young people approached me and said, Pastor, can we start having church on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and Sunday? Amen. We had services all the time. And when I leave here, amen, after preaching, I'd go someplace else and preach. And get home maybe 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. We had church back then. People got healed, delivered, set free because people had faith in God. See, their faith wasn't in everything else. Their faith wasn't in their employer. Their faith wasn't in their bank account. Their faith wasn't in their doctors. Their faith wasn't in this one or that one. Their faith was in God. Hallelujah. Greatest times in my life is when I trusted God more than I trusted anybody else. Amen. You'll find in life you can't trust everybody. You can't trust everybody, but you can trust God. Amen. Amen. You can't trust yourself sometimes. You can't lean to your own understanding. But you've got to acknowledge God in all your ways. Amen. You've got to trust Him with all your heart. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And He said, your faith is large. Your faith is large. How large is your faith this morning? How huh? large enough to get you where you need to go, large enough to get you healed if you have a you know, problem or sickness that arises? How's your faith? You know, sometimes we neglect the little, you know, ache we have. We don't pray about it or anything. But then when cancer strikes, boy, we want everybody praying. But see, our faith hadn't been built up. We didn't believe God to stop the headache. We didn't believe God to stop the little pain we had. We didn't believe God, amen, to pay the little light bill that we didn't think we had money enough to pay. We didn't believe God, amen, to pay our tithes when we should have paid them so we could have paid our light bill because our money would have stretched further. Hello. Hello. Boy, you're real quiet this morning. Come on. Amen. Hopefully because you're listening. But see, our faith needs to be in that place where it can be activated at any time. This woman wasn't no big Christian. She wouldn't go to the disciples. Matter of fact, the disciples says, this woman's bothering us. Why is she crying out? Why is she pleading? Stop begging. Sometimes you've got to get in that place with yourself where you actually get down and beg God. Amen? And Jesus said, it's not right for me to, you know, give the children's bread to the dog. She, she was called a dog. And she said, hold on, Lord. I'm worshiping you. I believe you. I'm here, amen, to find some relief and deliverance for my daughter. I'm not here on my own behalf, but my daughter's behalf. I'm here so that you would do something in my family. Amen. amen. How many of you are praying for your family? Amen. Praying that God does something in your family. Amen. All my children's gone wild. I wonder why they've gone wild. Because you have most of the time. See, it can be traced back to us a lot of times. She so used to, they hear the mother and father down on their knees praying, crying out to God. You don't hear that much anymore. Amen. You sit down at the dinner table and just start digging in. You don't even thank God for your food. Hopefully nobody's poisoned it. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You know what you're eating today. You better start thanking God for it and ask God to bless it to be nourishing to your body. Amen. 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 Bless the hands and prepare because you don't know what them hands have been into. Hello. Amen. 
Amen. Oh, you're quiet. See, but we need to pray. We're always looking for somebody else to pray. See, when your prayer goes up, your answer comes down. But if your prayer don't make it, it don't come nowhere near God or coming down so that you get the answer and the relief you need for whatever you're praying for. And he said something else to her. He said, you got some large faith. See, I've studied the Bible. You can have small faith. You can have medium faith. And you can have large faith. And you can have no faith. Can you imagine being part of the twelve disciples who saw the lame man walk? Who saw the blind man see? Who saw the deaf man hear? The excitement of that deaf man hearing for the first time. Seeing people that were dead being raised. Amen. Seeing all that walking with Jesus. You, some of you say, well, if I could have just been there in Jesus' day, man, things would have been different. I had so much faith. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't have any problems. My Lord, I'd believe uh, beyond any doubt because I'd have been right there with Jesus. But I'm saying disciples doubted many times. Yes. The same disciples when Jesus, amen, was arrested, scattered like sheep with no shepherd. Mm -hmm. One of them had already denied him. Another one had betrayed him. And on the cross he asked, Father, why have you forsaken me? So when I think about my ministry, my Lord, I ain't went through nothing yet. I think about Jesus' ministry. I think about all that he went through. Now here's the Son of God. He had mega churches several times and cleared them out by just a hard saying. Amen. Everything goes good until somebody says hard to you. Something hard to you. Huh? You just shouting up a storm until somebody says something hard and then you're offended. Well, the Bible says you're going to be offended by the Word of God. And when you get offended, your faith begins to just get smaller. You don't trust God. You don't trust anybody. And you want everybody else to do your praying. It don't work that way, folks. So if you come to this church, see, and you're, you're not married, you're living together, you're going to get offended, I'm sure. If you come to this church and you're practicing homosexual, you're going to get offended, I'm sure you are. Because I'm not stopping preaching on that for you or nobody else. Amen. See, our saying is, we welcome everyone, but we don't change our message for no one. Amen. Amen. See, the gospel is the gospel, whether you're an adulterer, a fornicator, a thief. That's right. Huh? Yep. All those sins, amen, are nothing more than sin. Amen. And sin is just something that destroys your life. Amen. Romans 6 23 says for the wages of it is death mm -hmm. but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord amen so it's a payday for sin sin amen takes you further than you want to go keeps you longer than you want to stay amen makes you pay more than you want to pay amen, amen. 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 that's what sin does for you and for someone to get upset that you preach about sin, shame on you. Amen. See, that faith you have in God ought to already get you to a place where you're not walking in the old flesh anymore. You're crucifying the flesh on a daily basis. I told my sister, I said, the Bible says crucify yourself. Daily. She says, that's hard. I said, really? Not because... You can take a hammer and nail and do your feet. You can even do one hand. But you got one left. Don't worry about it. There's enough people out there that want to crucify you. They'll help you. Yeah. Hey Amen. You always get some help when it comes to that. I've been crucified many, many times over. They'll always help you. Hey Amen. You're on top of the world. They'll try to bring you down to hell. Simple as that. They don't, amen, have your well-being in consideration, nor their own. That's right. I mean, those misery loves company. Yes. I don't want to be miserable, and I don't want the company of somebody in misery. Yeah. 
I want the joy of the Lord because the joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen. And if you don't have that in your life, then you're going to live a miserable life. You're going to always try to have something else that's going to fulfill that void that only God can fill. See, when God breathed into man's nostrils, he became a living soul. Hallelujah. He became part of God. Amen. And because he's part of God, he's never content being away from God. The prodigal left. He left that home of luxury and blessing. Somebody said, how do you know? Because he said, the servants in my father's house are doing a lot better off than I'm doing. Yes. I find myself in a pig pen. I will eat the husk off the corn, but nobody can even give me that. Now, then you're hungry when you're going to do that. Amen. Amen. And there he was, living with the pigs. How many people do you know living with the pigs? Even though they went to the Father's house. Amen. Even though they ate at the Father's table. They've gone and lived with the pigs. And you know, he thought he had everything together. And that's the way it is. Every time somebody leaves is when they believe they got it made. Read the story for yourself and really dissect the story. He was in the father's house, living a life of luxury. He said, hey, father, I know you're not dead yet, but uh, I want my inheritance now. He had no right to it. His father said, okay, and gave it to him. What did he do with it? He wasted it on riotous living. He wasted it on things he should have never got involved with. And then what happened? In the pig pen one day, starving to death, he came to himself. What in the world am I doing here? I smell like a pig. I eat with the pig. I'm taking care of pigs. And my father's servants are better off than me. Why do we have to hit bottom so many times before we stand up and say, I just want to be on top. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I just want to be in the Father's house. I just want, amen, to know that I'm not leaving. I know I can take what I got and leave. Doesn't really belong to me. Somebody said, well, I worked hard for it. Don't belong to you. Everything you have belongs to God. Amen. How do you know? I know it does because all the gold, all the silver, all the cattle on all the hills belong to God. The earth and the fullness thereof, it all belongs to God. And you, amen, have become a living soul only by the breath of God. How do you think you own anything? Come on. Hello. Amen. You don't own nothing. God gave you as a caretaker of 90%. If you waste it, That's right. you end up in a pig pen. Amen? Amen? Even if you gave your 10%, if you waste the 90, you're not a good steward. Right. And you end up in the pig pen. Amen. What did he waste his on? Riotous living. Things of the world. Getting out there, getting drunk, doing everything he thought he was big enough to do until all of a sudden everything come crashing in. Looked in his wallet, didn't have a dime. Looked in his bank account, it was closed. Tried to cash a check. Said there wouldn't be any funds available. It bounced. Now he owed more, amen, than he had. Because they charged him for bounced checks. Somebody said they didn't have no checks back then. Well, let me tell you something. They might not have, but I guarantee you. He didn't have anything. Couldn't borrow anything. Couldn't get anything. Came to himself, so I go back to the father's house. Wouldn't his father's faith that brought him back? Wouldn't his elder brother's faith that brought him back? Wouldn't the pigs that brought him back? It wasn't those people that he spent all his wealth on that brought him back. He came to himself. Said self. You really messed up. Your father had blessed you. You had everything.
everything you needed. You had all the riches of the Father. Everything was available. How do you know that? Because the Father told the eldest son who got upset, he said, you didn't never kill a fatty calf for me. You never, amen, had a party for me and my friends. And his Father said, it's always been here. Amen. All that I have belongs to you. Shame on you. You never wanted it. Huh? So you got two groups of people. You got those that think they're doing everything for God. Amen. Or everything for the Father. And all they do is run, run around griping about what they don't have. And you got the other ones that's wasted everything God's given. And then they find themselves in a pig pen. Hopefully we're part of the people, amen, that just have trusted God. Amen. Amen. Just have stayed in the Father's house and have been blessed and have joy and have peace that the world can't get. Amen. Yeah. Great is your faith. You can study it and read it. Time is getting away from us, but if you study and read, you'll find in several different places the Bible says your faith. Amen. Your faith. The woman with the issue. The Lord tells her your faith. Mark chapter 5 verses 24. She came trembling. She knew she wouldn't hit. This is what the Word of God says. What she had done, and He said to her daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace, heal of your disease. Your faith has made you well. Not somebody else's. Your faith. Amen? <coughs> Blind Bartimaeus. The Bible says, And Jesus said to him, All right, it's done. Your faith has healed you. Stop thinking about everybody else's faith. Amen? Think about the faith God has given to you and what God has blessed you. With the ten lepers, what did He say to them? And Jesus said to the man, Stand up and go. Your faith has made you well. Time and time again, you'll read in the Word of God how your faith has done it. Amen. The son, deaf and dumb, Jesus said to His disciples, Oh, what tiny faith you have. If I can... Jesus asked, anything is possible if you have faith. What did the Father say? Jesus, help my faith. I had a little faith, but not enough faith. Help my faith. As we are here this morning, we ought to be asking God, God, help our faith. God, help our faith. Because when God begins to move in your life with His Word, and it ignites your spirit, and faith abounds, you'll be able to move the mountains. You'll be able to move the obstacles. You'll be able to defeat the devil. You know what the devil He's afraid of people that have faith. He's concerned about you really standing up and standing out for God. He thinks if he can pull the church away and pull the church down, then he's won. The reality of it, he's already lost. Yes. He lost on the cross. Amen. He lost in our life. If we put Jesus on the throne and we put ourselves on the cross, we are winners already. Yeah. You're saved, amen, by grace. Not by what you do. But God expects you to do something amen. with what He gave you. That's over and over. That's not a new concept, folks. That's constantly throughout the Word of God. Amen. amen. So, Stand to your feet this morning. Turn to your neighbor once again. Say it's all about your faith. It's all about your faith. And the pastor can have all the faith in the world, but you've got to help with your faith. See, the Bible says when any two touch and agree, God always brings numbers into existence. Amen? Amen? Where two or three are gathered Amen. in my name. God's always concerned about numbers. May not be much, but somebody that's going to come together. Because see, one may put a thousand to flight, but two 
can put 10,000 to flight. Hallelujah. That's 10 times more than one by himself. So if we join together, amen, as a faith-filled church and faith-filled people, we can defeat the devil. Amen. Somebody told me this morning, the devil's really fighting this church. Yes. Sure he is. He doesn't like the way I preach. <laughs> he doesn't like that. He doesn't like the fact that I call people out and just tell them, hey, it ain't going to work that way. They ought to appreciate it. Because all I'm doing is trying to save them from the devil's hell, and that's where they're headed without God. Boy, you can rebel. People do it all the time. But rebellion is wrong. It's witchcraft. Stubbornness is idolatry. Yes. So when you dig your heels in and fight against this ministry, fight against this church, you become an idol worshiper. You might think you're worshiping God, but the Bible says they have a form of God in it, but deny the power thereof. In other words, you may say you're a Christian, but you might have the power of God in your life to keep you from sin, keep you from defeat, keep you from hopelessness. See, because without hope, amen, you'll never make it.
church they had an Ananias. And a Sapphire. They came to church and lied about their giving. He lied first. But they'd already made a path before they left the house. You say we gave it all, I'll come in and I'll confirm the fact we gave it all. But it was a lie. Peter said it was yours. Why would you have to lie about it? It belonged to you. And you come here a lie. He said, you don't lie to me, you lie to God. And the Bible said, you felt dead. And he had the young man to carry him out and bury him. Then his wife stepped in because she came in late like a lot of our people. Your face. 